What's the worst thing someone tried to correct you about something you're specialized at? I studied history at uni and worked for a while as a tour guide in Prague, Czech Republic. I had a customer once on a walking tour of the city go really snarky with me because I called the river running through the city the Voltava. He declared to the whole tour that that wasn't its name. I asked him if he'd heard it referred to as the Moldau, as that was the German name for the river during the Habsburg era when German was the official language, but he said no, and was I stupid. The river was called the Danube. I pointed out to him that the Danube doesn't run through Prague, and asked if maybe he was thinking of Brno? No, he had definitely read in a guidebook that it was the Danube and why the hell was he paying money for this tour if the guide didn't even know what the river was called. At which point another tourist in the group showed him her guidebook where it clearly said, Voltava. Then another showed him a map. And another showed him another guidebook, and so on, until the whole group had basically showed him what a twazer he was being. He didn't apologize, of course, but at least he shut up for the rest of the tour. I'm not really specialized, but a Redditor tried correcting me about the geography of my country, Norway. Claiming that it was very much flat like all the other Nordic countries, and he refused to believe me when I told him that it's the opposite and it's filled with mountains. I'm majoring in archaeology. I had a guy start talking to me about dinosaurs. I correct him and say it's a fairly common misconception, but paleontology and archaeology are two different fields and I'm studying humans, not dinosaurs. He doubles down and insists I need to know about dinosaurs because, what do you do if you're digging up ruins and find a dinosaur fossil? Call a paleontologist? He smugly tells me I'll be useless in the field if I don't know about dinosaurs and I better start registering for paleontology courses and leaves. I still don't know about dinosaurs. I had to leave R. Welding for this reason. I'm a welder on nuclear submarines with over 14 different X-ray welding qualifications at this company alone. I would constantly get into arguments with people who are new and have no real-world experience with welding. The amount of wrong information being thrown out left and right over there is insane. There are plenty of very knowledgeable folks there, but they are overshadowed by the ignorant. You wouldn't believe the number of times people tried to tell me that people only become diabetic if they eat too much sugar and insist they are right. I'm a type 1 diabetic, diagnosed at 14 months. Was I drinking soda from my bottles and using ring pops as pacifiers, then? So, Canadian lawyer here. I used to do primarily firearms law. I taught a course in firearms law at university, I've been consulted on it by lawyers, I've had judges tell other lawyers to phone me with firearms law questions. I had a law student telling me that I was oh so wrong about firearms law on a particular topic. Eventually they went and cited a particular case, which I politely advised them they were wrong about. They keep going on, talking about how just because I'm a lawyer and they're a student doesn't mean they're wrong. Meanwhile I'm just holding my tongue. Eventually someone else chimed in to be like, ah, uh, don't you know who that is? And the case you cited was a case he personally argued and won on. Satisfying AF. Not me, but yesterday I was at a physics lecture given by Donna Strickland, who won the Nobel Prize in Physics last year for her work in lasers. During the questions afterwards some kid, either undergrad or young grad, I didn't know him, was all, I have a comment more than a question, and proceeded to explain some laser technique to her and that she should use it. Her response was a, yes, we are well familiar with X in my lab and use it. I was just kind of amazed at the moxie of a kid who tried to tell a Nobel laureate how to do her research in a room packed with hundreds of people. Edit, in the spirit of the thread, I do enjoy all the people explaining to me how academia works or stuff about women in science, seeing as I am a woman submitting her PhD within a month. Am a climber, people tell me to wear gloves all of the time. There is a form of climbing where gloves would be somewhat acceptable, although even then a bit questionable, but in free climbing, bouldering you cannot wear gloves because your fingers actually allow you to grip onto smaller pieces of rock. I'm a food scientist, so this happens basically all the goddamn time. One person insisting that MSG gives her terrible migraines. She was eating pizza at that exact time. Someone insisting that you should drink apple cider vinegar to alkalize your body to prevent diseases. I point out that's an acid. He insists it's not. Apple. Cider. Vinegar. 
Another person telling me how agave nectar is so much healthier and how I should replace all the sugar I eat with it. I tell her it's just a fructose-glucose mix and you might as well use corn syrup. She got really mad. Like irrationally mad. There is so much misinformation about food that this is basically constant for me. Asked to do the rear brakes on a classic Vespa, I think it may have been a 200 Raleigh, not sure, it was decades ago. So the owner and his pal turn up with the scooter. I loosen off and remove the rear rim and tire, loosen the hub nut and go to put the rear rim and tire back on, oh hey, wait a minute mate, what the feek you doing, I'm getting the hub off. Not like that you're not. So I tell them I'm going for a cuppa and a smoke and I'll be back when they've removed the hub. 4 hours, 0.4 bloody hours they were at it, hub wouldn't budge, not 1 millimeter. Getting bored I go back to them, put the rim and tire on, screw in and tighten two wheel bolts and using a mallet hit three times in one point, then three times 180 degrees opposite, rinse and repeat three or four times, whole rim, tire, hub assembly lifts off. I charge them one half a day labor for a 30 minute job. A guy that considered himself to be a music maven tried to correct me when I mentioned Beethoven's Ninth Symphony, Ode to Joy. He insisted that J.S. Bach composed it when, in fact, Bach never composed any symphonies, not to mention that Ode to Joy is one of Beethoven's most famous pieces. I'm a Harley mechanic and I swear most Harley riders have to pretend they know everything about their bike. I don't even argue with them anymore, I just tell them what's up and if they want to debate about it, I say, okay, and walk away, lol. A new house gets built next door to mine, and shortly after the owners move in, they knock on my door to complain that my house is built too high. I explain that my house was, is built on flat ground and their builder has built their house lower, and undercut my fence. The guy proceeds to give a long-winded spiel about how earthworks are done and my house is too high and I have to fix it. I then explain that I do earthworks for a living, have done the earthworks for 300 plus houses in my suburb alone, and around 1200 in the local area. I name his builder, site supervisor, engineer, the exact floor levels in the street, and the law that says that he has to pay to fix my fence. He still hasn't paid, and legal procedures are beginning soon. Edit 1, earthworks in this case is the removal of topsoil and any mud, clay, organic matter from beneath where the house is going to go, and replacing it with clean compacted sand, trimmed dead flat to within 10 millimeters. Edit 2, because his block was lowered and leveled to suit his engineer, he is responsible for retaining the land around him, which is now higher than his. Edit 3, I was prepared to let it slide, because his place being lower now helps my drainage in heavy rain. But when he wanted M.E. to pay for his retaining wall responsibility, and would not pay for his half of the fence, I decided that I had enough bluster and bullshit. Time to pay up. My wife has a friend who studied zoology who once told me that cows can't run or jump. I grew up with them. I, more than once, had to run after or away from them after they had jumped a fence. Cows are fucking fast when they want to be. I didn't specialize on it but when I worked at the deli in my local grocery store I had a guy come and asking for some sliced ham. I asked him if he wanted black forest ham, honey baked or mesquite ham. He looked at me and said it's not mesquite, it's mystique. I pointed at the sign and label on the actual eating ham that said mesquite ham but he still corrected me. I gave up and gave him his damn mystique ham. This was a good 15 years ago and I'm still mad about it. I'm a professional pastry cook. The GM at my new job tried to reteach me how to crack eggs. I'm an identical twin and a big biology nerd. I had someone insist that fraternal twins are paternal twins and explain why she'll have some BC they've leapfrogged through her husband's family. Edit, I love the convos this reply started. I'll use the platform to say that I once specifically asked my genetics professor in college if a woman can inherit a twinning gene through her father. He said yes, he believed so. It blew my mind. Of course it does not affect the man's ability to have twins, but it can potentially affect future female offspring. I'm a nurse and I particularly like it when people try to inform me about medications, but I usually take paracetamol every hour. And that's why you're here with liver problems Karen. I got shut down by this actually. I was arguing with my cousin while we were in an old hydraulic elevator. 
I said the hydraulic elevators are slow, crap and have far more failures than cable elevators. The guy standing across from us laughs, shakes his head and says he's an elevator repairman, and that's not true at all. Shamed. Someone in my school, USA, tried to correct my Spanish, I'm Puerto Rican a Spanish-speaking colony of the US, and then I started talking full Spanish and he walked away. That moment when after 20 minutes of arguing about something, the person googles it to prove you're wrong. That look on their face, the shame when they see you were right all along. Priceless. My height. I'm 6'10". Guy comes up and says he's 6'10 so I must be like 7. Nah, man, you're 6'6 six, six max. And then we went back and forth about that for a bit. Also had the other side of that coin where someone will ask how tall I am and I'll reply, 6 feet 10 inches and they just straight up won't believe me and will tell me I'm lying. Like, what? Why? What would I possibly stand to benefit? People without their ID constantly try and quote various laws about being able to order alcohol when out with parents. I work in a pub which is part of a chain. We're regularly tested for Challenge 21. No I'm not handing you a pint when you can't prove you're old enough and wouldn't be willing to pay the £1,000 fine I'd receive. 